them back out at the big airfield because I want some space to be able to do this test. This is the, uh, we're back out with the, my ultimate Aero Scout, testing the flapper on effectiveness. I've done this test once before, but I didn't have good camera angles, so I wanted to do it again. Set up some markers here. Uh, over here I've got the start mark. There's, you can see my windsock over there. It's pretty much zero wind, but when it does come up a little bit, it, it's blowing from the north. So this will be my start line. I only had four cones, but this first line here is 15 feet. Second line is 20 feet, and I got a cone there. 25 feet. 30 and 35 and then I got a little line here at 40. I'm going to try to set up the camera to where you can see right where the plane lifts off. My last test with zero wind with full flaps I was taken off at uh, 25 feet which is that second cone and with no flaps it was taking about 36 feet so it had been right about here. So trying to get some good angles on that so you can with a camera in a fixed position We'll be able to see right where it lifts off. I'm out here by myself, so I can't really have somebody walk up and mark it when uh, when I get airborne. I'm lined up at the 25 foot mark. That was my full flap mark there, so I think this will give me better. We'll get set up, get my battery installed. I'm also going to wear my head camera, get another point of view from probably behind the plane. So, all right, stand by. Lined up at my mark. Let's do a little pre flight. High rate. Got high rates on. Left aileron, right aileron. Up elevator, down elevator. Left rudder, right rudder. Throttle active. I'm just going to go full throttle and full up elevator and just keep it tracking straight and we'll see where it takes off on its own. Full flaps. All right, let's go. But still got a little bit of wind. Try to get a few of each while we can. All right, three, two, one, go. Trying to land as quick as I can to not use up any battery. This one will have full flaps. Flaps up this time. losing track. I think that was no flaps, so we'll go full flaps this time. All right, full flaps. All right, flaps up again. All right, 
hopefully with enough of these I can analyze the data and get some decent info. I can't, I really can't tell just looking at it with my eye. All right, now we're doing full flaps. I know people have a hard time landing this, but she just, you just gotta learn to control your speed. She'll land easy without any drama, no bouncing. You just gotta get control of your speed. Flaps up. We'll land flaps up this time. I've been landing with flaps down. Let's land flaps up, see if I can get her slowed down. See how much different it feels trying to land with no flaps. Seems to want to drop a lot more. Eh, well, not bad. But it definitely fly, seems to fly slower and it wants to kind of lets me get it slowed down without dropping the rate of descent is not so high with the flaps down. All right, another one with full flap. Flaps up. So what I've done, updated the firmware, had to get the cable for it. I couldn't, you can't just do it. So I had to buy the cable, plug it into your PC. Um, for some of the radios, you can get in there and program all kinds of things with the AR631, at least this one. Uh, you can't really do anything with it other than update the firmware, download the, and, and save the, the file that's on the, rec the uh, receiver. But uh, I did updated the firmware. When you update the firmware, it doesn't, if you say check for updates, it doesn't say there's an update because it says it's the current one. But go ahead and update it anyway. Uh, it is a different firmware, even though it doesn't say it is. Uh, but that changed it. That enabled some extra things on the, uh, the Lua scripts, the forward programming. It actually would identify what receiver it was, so that's cool. As soon as they did the, update, the firmware update, it did start recognizing that, so that changed it. Um, once I did that... I uh, got into the forward programming, uh, did a factory reset of the AR631, and that pretty much just wiped everything out. Then I could get in there with my son's NX6 uh, spectrum transmitter, could basically reprogram the, the, the receiver from scratch. I first started out setting up the model. I took the Y out of the channel 1 for aileron, and I've now got, uh, the, I think it's the right aileron, I can't remember, right or left, on channel 5. One of the ailerons is on channel 5, the other one's on channel 1. I set it up that way in the uh, Spectrum setup to use uh, flapperons. Um, so now I've got flapperons with it. Um, <clears throat> so I'll set that up. Then after I've set up the model with flapperons and using channel 5 as an aileron, then I could go into the, the uh, forward uh, programming options on the NX6, reprogram all the safe and AX3X modes from scratch, and uh, got everything working the way it needed to be. Uh, but uh, this has enabled me to have um, flapperons. Um, so that's working good. So even with the, the flaps down, I still got control. Uh, another thing I ran into when I set up the flapperons with the standard rates, when I uh, used the offset and, and made the flaps work, when I would try to use the ailerons, it was very uh, unresponsive. You know, I didn't get a lot of movement because when I would move the aileron all the way to the uh, left, for example, I would only get, um, I would only, it would only go up to parallel. It would not go beyond that. So the only uh, throws I had to get it to turn was this one that was stuck down because it was in flat mode. Um, by fiddling with the rates, 
uh, and changing them. I'm now able to get full swing. When I've got the flaps down, I've bumped up the rates on the output to uh, when I'm in mid, uh, uh, when I'm in uh, takeoff flaps, I uh, increase the rates to 150%, I think it is, and that let me go all the way up. When I go full flaps, I had to set it to 200% rates on the output to give me full swing. So now, as I'm coming in for a landing, I'll still be able to get much better control uh, if I need it when the flaps are down. Because uh, without that, like I said, I was barely able to get uh, just up to, to parallel, and it was very unresponsive. As well. uh, oh, I moved the uh, control on the uh, aileron to the far inside uh, hole to give me maximum throws. So I've got a more, little bit more throws on the ailerons, and that would give me more. So I wanted to get as much flap uh, action as I could. My goal with this plane is to make a basically a stall version of the Aero Scout. So I wanted maximum flaps. Um, you know, plus, you know, now that it's not, a, I'm not using this one as a beginner plane. I, you know, I want maximum throws. I also, uh, the elevator, I moved that. There, I don't know how to adjust it here because it's internal, but I was able to move the control uh, further out on the, uh, the uh, servo uh, control arm. So I've got a little bit more uh, ele uh, elevator authority. I've got another upgrade I'm planning on doing. Um, I'm going to keep that a secret for now. We got the uh, flapper on test done. Uh, we'll review that footage and see how well the uh, uh, see how well they did. Uh, I know I had good success before, um, but it was hard to tell from standing behind it like that. So, uh, and the Aero Scout, such a cool plane, and I've just you know I'm trying to make the uh, ultimate Aero Scout. Uh, Right from the get-go, I wanted the flapper on, and um, it definitely helps uh, settle it down a little bit on landing. A lot of people complain about how fast it lands, and they have a hard time landing it. But I did want to be able to land shorter. We got a shorter field on our other field, and I want to be able to land there easier. I didn't want to make sure I wasn't taking up too much space. Um, but uh, Aeroscout is a phenomenal plane. People learn on this thing, but uh, heck, I you know I've been flying for quite a few years, and uh, I have a ball with it. So it is a lot of fun. Well, thanks for watching. And uh, you guys take care.